uh, welcome dear participants. Thank you for attending this session. In the session, our presenter is Gizem Kızıltunalı. Uh, she, will uh, she is the uh, faculty member at uh, co uh, uh, Department of New Media and uh, Communication. And she will uh, share the result of uh, her study, which focused on some of the popular activist posters and images related to the Gezi Park incidents that took place in Turkey in 2013. Uh, Gizem uh, could you please introduce yourself uh, very uh, briefly and then um, share your uh, presentation and your results and your experience? Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Özlem uh, First of all, I'd like to thank my department for giving the opportunity to be a part of the seminar series. Uh, I'm Gizem Kuzultunalı, uh, as everybody knows here. Um, I'm a faculty member of New Media and Communication Department. Uh, this is my fourth year at Cheshire University as a full-time faculty member. I did my PhD at Manchester Metropolitan University in the Department of Media. Uh, and ever since I've been teaching, I also have teaching experience in, uh, in the UK for like three years. And ever since I've been teaching, uh, under the Department of New Media and Communication in, Depart uh, in Yashar University. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, culture jamming, uh, in other words, the tournament in Gezi Park protests. Uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, this article actually was uh, an article that I wrote in 2018. Uh, and it was accepted in 2018, but it was published, officially published in visual communication in 2020, uh, as you can see. And, if, and the actual name of my article is The Tournament in Social Media Visuals for Shared Activist Identity and Imagery. Uh, if you would like, you can check it out later uh, in the site of uh, visual communication. Uh, so this seminar, about this seminar, what we will see in this seminar, let me go through it briefly. Uh, I'm going to talk about the detourned anti-governmental uh, social media images of Gizi Park. Um, the tournament uh, means at the same time culture jamming. Uh, I preferred using culture jamming uh, in my title, as my title, because uh, that is the more contemporary usage of the term, uh, but I'm, I'm going to use these two terms interchangeably during my session. Uh, so I'm going to use the tournament and culture jamming interchangeably. Um, right, so I'm going to be looking at the deterrent anti-governmental social media images of Gizi Park, uh, how the protesters uh, challenged the governmental attacks of uh, the uh, government and how the activists retaliated to these attacks through humorous uh, forms of the tournament images. Uh, and also I'm going to be looking at the leading uh, patterns of uh, signification these images led to. Uh, so we can say that these images uh, led to a form of uh, new meaning patterns and finally, I'm going to conclude my uh, session by pointing out how these new significations led to the formation of an activist Gizi identity. Okay, so what was Gizi moment? Uh, we're already familiar with what it is, uh, but this was also uh, an article that I presented uh, in an international uh, panel uh, in Spain. So um, I gave much more details in my article and my presentation in Spain as well. So I won't go through uh, what happened during uh, Gezi and etc. Uh, but briefly, I'm going to cover it up. Uh, so Griffin uh, argues that there are two movements uh, in society uh, that take place. Uh, the first one uh, is intended for composing or defending institutions. And the second kind of main movement uh, is people going for de the demolishment and overthrowing of existing uh, institutions. 
However, uh, unlike Griffin's theorization, uh, the Gezi moment was uh, unlike such moments. Rather, it was a collective moment. From collective moments, what do we understand? Um, first of all, people come together for a change. A group of social protesters or AKA activists come together uh, because they think that something, uh, some things uh, in society are going wrong. And as a result of this, they come together uh, and go for a change, uh, do things for a change. So it was a collective moment in this regard. Uh, and also there are two types of important uh, protest image studies. Uh, the first one is the rhetoric of agitation and control, uh, which was written by Bowers and Oss. Uh, and here the writers propose that images are passive resistance tools. Uh, so they, they are actually used for activist uh, intentions, but they're passive tools. Uh, but they also aim for change. Um, and the second one indicates that image uh, indicates that images are utilized by activists. So this is the main argument of uh, Delico in uh, his book Image Politics, which was written in 1999. Uh, so uh, basing my arguments on these studies, uh, I decided to look at the protest images uh, of Gezi Park and how these activist images uh, were also tools of uh, passive uh, resistance. So such images uh, produced a change in the policies of the leading political party as a conclusion, I came to this conclusion. Maybe it is early for, the uh, for me to mention the conclusion, but we already are familiar uh, with the fact that uh, they produced a change in the policies of the leading political party. Evet, uh, involving new media. Uh, new, so one very salient aspect of uh, the Gezi Park protests uh, was the involvement of new media. Uh, this means that individuals and social groups, uh, at, the, at the same time, I'd like to take a look at what new media means uh, in terms of the usage of new media means in terms of political ideologies and new social relations. Here, Khan and Kenan argues that individuals and social groups use emerging technologies so as to produce new relations and political ideologies. So uh, just like you know, uh, those movements that I uh, mentioned before, those social movements, uh, usually uh, a group of protesters or people coming together uh, want to produce a new social relation um, or a political uh, or, or produce a new political ideology. Uh, so similarly, uh, the activist posters I focus are for, I focus on are chosen for their popularity in social media during the Gizi demonstrations. Uh, here I'd like to um, highlight the fact that uh, I chose these popular uh, images. Uh, based on their popularity. My aim wasn't to measure how popular uh, what image was. Rather, I wanted to uh, focus on the culture jamming aspects of uh, these images. So uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, so just if you have any questions about that, uh, my decision was based on this fact. So what's my method and what are the main questions, research questions of my study? Uh, as a method, as a, uh, I engage with the theoretical uh, method of the tournament, in other words, uh, culture jamming, uh, as a theoretical method uh, or approach to form my ideas related to Gezi Park posters and images. There are three main questions I address in this study. The first one, I'm going to read all of these. How does the connection between humor and protest manifest itself on the Gizzi Park images and posters? How are anti-activist motives and expressions of the government negated and transformed into pro-activist retaliation through the tournament? And my third question is, how does the tournament lead to a shift in meaning and signification in the activist visuals? 
based on these three questions, uh, I conducted my study, as you will see in the preceding slides. Now let's define what the tournament is. Uh, the tournament, AKA culture jamming. As I told you, culture jamming is a more contemporary uh, usage of the term the tournament. Uh, so there are two meanings related to the tournament and culture jamming, but let's um, spotlight the tournament uh, as a first step. The tournament means a detour or diversion uh, in English. Uh, again, Sadler uh, states that the tournament also means hijacking, embezzlement, corruption, and misappropriation in French. So uh, it is clear that both uh, languages have um, negative connotations regarding uh, the term, the, the concept. But we will see how these uh, negative connotations are, are upturned uh, and uprooted and uh, transformed into something positive. All right, so let's take a look at our first image. Uh, the first image is escape capitalism as a prison. Now, this is a typical de tournament example uh, or culture jamming example. First of all, we should know that the tournament uh, is um, generated as a result of the Situationists International. But who are the Situationists? Let me briefly mention uh, what their aims are, what their principles are, and et cetera. They are an international organization of social revolutionaries, Situationist Internationals, and they're made up of avant-garde artists. Uh, their foundations are primarily uh, derived from libertarian uh, Marxism, Dada, surrealism, and uh, avant-garde art. Uh, and what they try to do is they try to synthesize these diverse theoretical uh, disciplines into a critique of uh, capitalism. Uh, and as a result of this, uh, they have a very strong Marxist uh, position and they try to um, subvert Marxist images um, and visuals through humor and wit. Uh, so let me read this bullet point as well. Through the subversive method of the tournament, the Situationists, De Borg and Van Gam, uh, they're the prime uh, Situationists, tried to subvert spectacular commodified representations and practices that feed the system of capital explain to you, this uh, can be interpreted as a very typical, stereotypical uh, example of uh, capitalism. Here it says escape capitalism, and there's the barcode over here. People are trying to escape uh, capitalism as a prison, like you can see. And other examples, here there are two more ex examples. Um, we see two capitalist extensions over here, two capitalist, very capitalist brand uh, visuals over here. The first one is uh, a de tournament, a culture jamming example of McDonald's. Uh, the uh, M is turned upside down uh, and is made into a W, uh, which is the uh, capital of um, weight. And instead of their uh, motto, well-known motto, I'm loving it, here it says I'm gaining it, meaning weight again. So here we see that humor, wit and irony uh, and parody is used as very uh, salient forms of criticism. And if we take a look at the second um, visual, uh, we see Nike. Uh, and there's this man uh, having a lash in his hand and child exploitation of Nike is touched upon here. Uh, and the motto, just do it, just like, you know, McDonald's, I'm loving it, is uh, turned upside down and used uh, in a very different context as a way of um, humorous criticism. Uh, and child labor and exploitation is being touched upon uh, in the visual. Let me read the bullet points now. Uh, okay, so these are the, the tournament illustrations related to capitalism, McDonald's and Nike's. The images suggest a switch of perspective, like I told you, because they take the motto, they take the, uh, the logo and they turn them upside down, they twist it, and then they represent it uh, by the way they have reconstructed them. 
uh, in this way, they um, manifest uh, a humorous kind of criticism. So a switch of perspective and offer a new angle on the way we perceive capitalism and capitalist labels. Uh, in this regard, we can say that they also um, uncover uh, the disturbing aspects, the realities of uh, capitalism or capitalist labels, extensions and etc. In this respect, uh, like I told you, uh, they highlight the disturbing aspects of capitalism. All right, so culture jamming in political activism. Culture jamming and political activism today are not only used uh, against capitalistic um, intentions, but at the same time, they're mostly used in political uh, domains. Uh, so political activism, uh, under the, in the domain of political activism, uh, we get to see lots of culture jamming and, and uh, detournement examples. Uh, detournement, aka culture jamming, is an insurrectionary style to which many protesters' practices can be related, even in our contemporary times. And today, it can be considered as among the tools of a new activism. So there are two important historical examples of the tournament use uh, or culture jamming use. The first one is the 1968 French Revolt. Uh, so the French Revolt was highly influenced by the Situationist Internationals. Uh, because it uh, manifested many types of verbal and visual forms of detournement examples. Um, and it consisted of uh, the Fr French provocateurs whose new media practices at the time, new media practices included manifestos, broadsheets, pranks and disinformation. But if we take a look at our present time, we see social media and new media uh, as forms of <clears throat> um, as forms of the tournament usage. And I will come to that uh, in my Gezi Park uh, interpretations. The second one is the 1970s punk movement, uh, which I'm also a big fan of. Uh, so 1970s punk movement was also under the influence of Situationist International, but it was under the influence of Situationist International in a different way because uh, the punk movement was generated mainly by the influence of the uh, punk band Sex Pistols. Uh, and Sex Pistols was under the influence of Situationist Internationals. Uh, <clears throat> and as a result of this, uh, Sex Pistols projected nihilistic ideals, detorn political images, clothing styles, and posters, especially Malcolm McLaren, uh, who was a very uh, close friend of Vivian Westwood, uh, was very popular at the time. And through these idols and icons, uh, the punk movement be became very mainstream, very ubiquitous uh, in the um, <clears throat> British society. As a result of this movement, uh, British youth uh, found a way of expressing their disillusionment with the policies of the British government. So again, here we see uh, the tournament and uh, cultural jamming uh, in the context of political activism. So parody and satire, these are very important um, <clears throat> and very pivotal elements of uh, the tournament or culture jamming. So what are these? Uh, satire and parody are tools of resistance and retaliation of political activists. And they are highly used in the detourned images uh, and also uh, the po posters, uh, the neologisms uh, of the activists. The use of satire and humor uh, is are central to the tournament, like I told you before. And through humorous criticism, the tournament suggests a different approach to reality and how it can be perceived. First, this reality was only um, accountable for capitalistic images, but later it transformed metamorphosed into uh, capitalistic images, okay? 
Uh, and as a result, it denaturalizes and parodies reality to expose and counter alienation. This was, this is of course a Marxist statement, uh, but now it is also used uh, for denaturalizing and parodying the reality, the political realities of societies and to criticize the uh, policies of societies. All right, so creativity and extremist innovation are two very uh, pivotal aspects of the tournament, again, uh, because the tournament is such a practice that it brings out uh, the creativity that rests, that are nested in individuals. Um, and it's an insurrectionary style, uh, so it, it, is, it has uh, some, um, it has a resistance vibe a soul, a resisting soul, but it does it in a very humorous and peaceful way, uh, which is also blended with creativity. Uh, and as a result of all these uh, important elements, we can say that, uh, as Debord um, coins it, uh, the tournament in culture jamming is an extremist innovation, which is mostly seen uh, within the youth cultures. So let's come to culture, culture jamming. Uh, like I already mentioned, culture jamming is a very contemporary usage of uh, the tournament. Uh, and today, <clears throat> the tournament is also referred to as culture jamming. Uh, and culture jammers are political heirs to situationists, Situationist International. And what are their aims? Uh, their aim is to unravel the methods of domination. This means the political domination, the policies of the governments, okay? So uh, to under, they try to unravel the methods of domination related to mainstream society. This can be political, this can be capitalistic, uh, this can be anything that is dominant in the mainstream society. So as to generate a change of perspective or to offer an alternative reality to the dominant forms of realities. So let's come to Gizi Park. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the details uh, of what happened that night because uh, we all are familiar with what, what happened and we all have been through the um, ordeal of Gizi Park. So I'm not going to go through it, but I'm just gonna to touch up on some important points related to the demonstrations. There was a survey carried out by Big University on the Gizi act activists. And <clears throat> the survey was based on learning why they participated in such uh, a demonstration, such a huge demonstration that turned out to be very uh, wide uh, demonstration around the uh, nation. Uh, the main question uh, was the main reasons why they participated in the events. So uh, I'm going to read these. 92% uh, of the participants said that the authoritarian attitude of the prime minister uh, was the main reason. 91% <clears throat> said the police disappropriate use of force was the main reason for their participation. 91% said violation of democratic rights was the main reason. Uh, and 84% said the silence of the media triggered them to participate in the Gezi Park events demonstrations. <clears throat> okay, so social media, uh, new media and media, uh, but not mainstream media, let's call it alternative media, uh, was a very important, holds a very important uh, part, uh, has a very important part uh, within the Gizzi Park protests. Uh, in general, social media uh, globally offers a platform for the organization of subjects all around the world nowadays. Uh, and it, the case was the same uh, with the Gizzi Park protests because uh, the internet provided an open broadcast uh, to reveal the protesters' ideas uh, that would not be uh, broadcast on mainstream media channels. Uh, at this point, I'd like to mention my personal experience uh, on the issue. I was at the time in England uh, and I was... Um, going through uh, Twitter and I was I was shocked because everybody was talking about the Gezi Park protest. Everybody was saying something 
they were talking about uh, gas, uh, gas bombs and etc. And I called my family and they said nothing unusual is going on because they were being they were being exposed uh, by the mainstream uh, media channels and they weren't showing anything related to the protests but the alternative media despite the fact that I was abroad was showing me what the reality was uh, within my country uh, so I also experienced it, it firsthand uh, and censorship in mainstream media uh, also leads uh, social media to become the realm of free platform of free communication and correspondence. And this was also the case uh, in Gezi Park demonstrations. <clears throat> so it was a platform where um, the activists uh, had uh, the chance of free communication of and, and uh, correspondence. So uh, there was this new um, concept that emerged as a result of uh, such uh, correspondence and communication. Of course, this existed, but this come to the fore uh, by in the Gezipar protests, which is citizenship journalism. Uh, the use of social media by the subjects led to the emergence of citizenship journalism uh, in Turkey as well. What does this mean? Uh, I'm sure uh, people who deal with media are already familiar with the term, but for the ones who don't know the term, I'd like to explain it once more again. Uh, it refers to sharing information by non-professional uh, people by the use of online sources. So this is what basically took place in Gezi Park events when people were trying to correspond with each other, communicate with each other uh, on Twitter uh, and on Facebook. I don't know, I, I'm, I wasn't using Facebook, but Twitter was bombarded with uh, that, those kind of correspondences. Okay, so the use of pranks. Uh, so there are two very uh, crucial um, lines that I'd like to read from Atkinson and Harold uh, regarding uh, pranks. Pranks are played to attract the attention of the media to destroy the power of authorities that control mainstream media. So this is uh, Atkinson's definition of what pranks is. Um, Harold, on the other hand, states that playing pranks by media tools is a rhetorical protest that reverses the original direction of attacks and turns them to their advantage. So these two definitions are exactly what happened in Gezi Park uh, protests. Uh, and we can, I believe, we can all relate to them. Uh, and the Gezi images, uh, the images in Gezi Park uh, were all endowed with elements of joke, wit, satire, and irony. And as a result, they all pointed out a pranking rhetoric. Of course, it was impossible for me to go through all the uh, prank, all the images that had this pranking rhetoric taste. So I chose one of the most, two of the most very salient and important uh, and also humorous types of uh, deterrent examples, which I will go through in my following um, presentation slides. Now, the first one is Chapulju and Chapuling, a neologism. Uh, all right, so we already know uh, how President Erdogan referred to the protesters. Uh, he said um, he referred to the Gezi activists as Chapulju. By that, he meant this is Mi's definition looters, losers, loafers, terrorists, and marginal people. Uh, but as a result of this, uh, the, act the activists didn't uh, carry out any kind of um, negative uh, retaliation uh, practices. Instead, what they did, did was uh, to reappropriate the, re the term. Uh, and this reappropriation was a humorous retaliation against uh, the government. Uh, so the creation, so as a result of this humorous retaliation, there was a creation of neologism. Uh, and this neologism uh, was based on the word chapulju and the verb chapuling. So there was this noun and also the verb chapuling. Uh, and what did these mean? They meant, uh, Chapulju meant becoming, I'm not going to say, meant Chapulju became a unifying reference point for anyone resisting against the government. So it basically provided a very 
uh, common ground for everybody who was trying to do the same thing. Uh, and it was basically their label. And BBC had very, uh, had a very remarkable um, expression regarding the situation. BBC, BBC calls such reference attempts an explosion of expression in the form of satire, irony, and outright mockery of the popular leader on Istanbul streets and social media. This is a direct quote that I took from BBC. Uh, and the protesters embraced Çapulcu in an artistic way uh, and applied it to their activism. Uh, and this meant a form of peaceful and humorous protesting. So, uh, and Çapulcu, as an extension of uh, the word, the neologism Çapulcu, uh, another line emerged. And at the time, there was a very popular song by LMFAO, Every Day I'm Shuffling. Uh, and as an extension of Çapulcu, activists sprayed the walls of Istanbul with the lines that read, read Every Day I'm Chuppling. Uh, and this was, like I told you, an adapted version of the song, Every Day I'm Shuffling. So Every Day I'm Shuffling, shuffling means to dance uh, carelessly. Uh, Every Day I'm Shuffling, um, had metamorphosed into every day I'm chuppling, meaning every day I'm resisting kind of expression. So the phrase that every day I'm chuppling became the entertaining act of protesting. So it wasn't about sh shedding blood. It wasn't about uh, causing harm or anything. It was all about having fun, but at the same time, standing up for your rights. So this, this, what, this is what made them very remarkable. This kind of uh, deutonomic practice is very remarkable. Uh, the image and expression uh, gained widespread uh, attention on uh, social media uh, and it went viral, in other words. Uh, and like I told you, toppling meant standing up for your rights and resisting state oppression and corruption. And this is one of, uh, one of the images, an authentic image uh, taken from the walls uh, of uh, Istanbul. Uh, and it was a very viral image on social media that I observed. Sorry. Yes. And there was another extension of uh, Chaplin. Uh, Charlie Chaplin post poster wearing a gas mask. Uh, so this was, I think, a very, very witty, witty uh, the tournament example. Uh, so there are two important connections uh, between Charlie Chaplin and the word chuppling. The first one is the similarity of the sound, Charlie Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin, it, it's transformed into Chaplin. Uh, and the second one is how the protesters and Chaplin resonate with the concept of liberty, as you already are familiar with. Uh, Charlie Chaplin is also famous for his uh, liberty speech, speech of liberty. and that is why he's also known as an icon in that sense. Uh, so this is one of uh, one of the most important uh, elements uh, why the Gizi activists, uh, how the Gizi activists uh, related with uh, Chaplin. So transforming Charlie Chaplin into Chaplin is a satirical de tournament example. And like I told you, it's a very uh, witty choice as well. Uh, and the image, attach, uh, the image attaches the ideals of Chaplin to the protesters' plight. Uh, like I told you, it's the um, protesters' uh, quest for liberty, democracy, uh, and Charlie Chaplin is also well known for his quest for liberty from his uh, speech of liberty. Chaplin, uh, in this sense, is not a, was not a random choice. His liberty speech was the strongest elements the activists identified with their struggle. And at the bottom of the image, it's a bit blurry, but I'll read it. A quote from Chaplin's speech uh, of liberty uh, is present, and it reads, I believe in liberty, that is all my politics. Uh, and the activists, the Gezi, Gezi activists, took this uh, direct line uh, from his liberty speech and adapted it to their own context. And as a result, uh, identified uh, this with their aim. This was also a very well-known uh, culture jamming example. 
Okay, so imposing censorship and the image of the penguins. This is the second uh, widespread uh, detournement example that went viral on social media. Um, okay, so on the 2nd of June, 2013, CNN Turk showed a documentary, but at the same time, uh, especially in Taksim area, uh, serious demonstrations and uh, protests were taking place. Um, instead of showing those demonstrations, uh, CNN Turk uh, broadcast uh, a penguin documentary, and in that doc that documentary was a, was an episode of Spy in the Huddle, uh, and it was an intentionally shown documentary so as to uh, impose censorship on the protests that were ta taking place uh, in Taksim area. Um, uh, one Turkish citizen got very angry and he took uh, CNN Turk and CNN International, uh, brought CNN Turk and CNN International together and took pictures of them all together, showing uh, which channel was showing the realities and the other one showing the penguin uh, sensor. Also tweeted this and through social media, this um, image also became very viral. It went viral. And as a result of this, the activists generated a very uh, remarkable uh, adapted. Uh, can you hear me? Because it says uh, the internet connection is unstable. Uh, your sound is clear. Okay, good. Uh, so as a result, uh, the activists also embraced the motive of penguins, uh, twisted it, and turned them to their own advantage. It was adapted and negated by the activists as a form of humorous culture jamming. Uh, the protesters turned an element used against them and worked it to their own advantage. Uh, and I would like to read another line, uh, which was very uh, ubiquitous on Twitter. Uh, it said, Antarctica is resisting. Of course, this is a direct translation from Turkish. Uh, the penguins, uh, it's not about the melting glaciers anymore. It's about Turkey, it's about democracy and etc. It implied that. Uh, so here with the penguin detournament, uh, we also see a reversal of perspective, but this reversal is not done in a negative way, in a very humorous, witty, but also effective way. So this reverse, as a result of this uh, perspective, a uh, reversal of perspective, uh, a kind of anti-conditioning was uh, generated by the protesters. And with the power of social media, uh, it became viral again. So like the neologism of Çapulcu, uh, the activists embraced an attack from the government. This time, the, the attack was the imposition of um, censorship. It took censorship, it took the censorship motive of the penguin, uh, reappropriated it uh, to their own interest, in other words, embraced it, and created their own signs, created their own witty, witty retaliation um, practice. And as a conclusion, what happens is, uh, the Gezi Park events taught us that the attacks from the government uh, formed the trigger that the activists needed to relate. Because the act, this is important, uh, the activists did not have a leader, they did not have a clear ideology that we can say uh, want to happen. And from that point, uh, they acted in unison. And in, for them to act in unison, they needed a trigger. And this trigger came from the government itself. And this trigger uh, resulted in the tournament. But uh, before coming to the tournament, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, the trigger uh, the activists needed came from the government. And uh, as a result of this trigger, uh, the, the attacks provided solidarity and a common ground uh, that the activists needed. Like I told you, as I told you before, there wasn't a leader, there wasn't a clear ideology, uh, but there was a common ground, there was solidarity. Uh, and this, 
common ground and solidarity all came from the attacks from the government. And this shows uh, how witty the youth of uh, the Turkish youth and Turkish people are, in my opinion. And this resulted in the tournament and culture jamming. Uh, and culture jamming fueled the urge for artistic uh, resistance. Maybe this is the reason why um, the protests in Gezi Park were not that bloody, were not that um, evil. Uh, in terms of uh, the activists, because there was art involved, because they were, there was humor involved, because there were uh, peaceful elements involved. Uh, and we can say that they metamorphosed protest and activism into fun and humor. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to say that these practices transformed citizens' surroundings into a stage of performance claimed by its own subjects. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you. I tried to make my presentation uh, as pleasant as possible. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to hear your questions now. Thank you. Uh, Gizem Ocan, thank you for your presentation. It was very nice and informative presentation. and. Uh, your uh, perspective for cultural jamming in uh, Gizli uh, Park, uh, I, I, uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, provides an intuition for all of uh, the uh, participation, participants for different to evaluate uh, these events. Uh, so uh, from the chat screen, uh, we can get to questions. Uh, Binzo Cham, uh, can we allow uh, participants to uh, join with uh, audio? Maybe uh, they would like to ask their questions. Uh, okay, uh, generally we prefer uh, chat or Q&A, but uh, I can make them co-hosts if they would like to ask questions, okay. but they should tell me if they do. Okay, uh, so we can take the question now. Many of the panelists, uh, sorry, many of the attendees are my students. So they're already familiar with what I uh, just presented, but please feel free to ask any questions to me. Okay, if you they don't have a question, I have a question. How many images uh, did you examine in your study? Uh, basically, instead of uh, analyzing uh, certain images, I tried to analyze what was uh, detourned. Uh, so this included uh, the neologism of Chopling and Chapulju uh, and the censorship elements and how these elements were um, solidified uh, in the form of images. So it wasn't basically a visual analysis. Yes, it had that uh, component to it, uh, but it wasn't all about, you know, analyzing uh, images. So uh, I, I, there were actually three or four images involved in general, but they weren't like the spine of the article because I also wanted to look at the neologisms, the censorship elements and how they were solidified in images. Okay, thank you. So uh, you will see all uh, Gizzi Park event uh, through uh, this uh, social media posts. Uh, I understand. I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, 